Hey everybody, catscamper.com here. I'm here to talk to you about the uh, Progressive Industries EMH HW50C uh, power protector. So that's it right there. And uh, you can install it yourself. It's pretty easy to install. Um, what you're looking at there is a lid. You can unscrew it. It has uh, six screws on it. And you take the uh, the cord, I would do this before you mount the box, you take the the uh, power supply cord and uh, I went ahead and cut mine, I figured out where I wanted it, I cut it. You go ahead and attach the uh, outbound part to the box before you mount it, then mount the box and then, uh, then mount the uh, outbound part of it that hooks up into the camper because you're in a restricted space so it's a little harder. That way I actually uh, hook the power cord part outside of the camper where I had space. This unit's pretty good. I had a uh, the 30 amp version on my travel trailer. There's a video of that on our website. But this will protect you from uh, over and under voltage protection, an open ground, open neutral, and open ground. Open neutral and accidental 240 per, uh, volt protection. A miswired pedestal indication. Um, it has a surge failure indicator. Inside there's an amp meter display. I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, the unit works pretty good. You plug it in, it has a slight delay. You'll hear the, the unit click. And, uh, and it just protects your internal electronics from being damaged. Um, there's lots of them that uh, they sell that you would plug into the pedestal outside and, uh, and then plug your power cord, your shore power into it. You know, these things are over a hundred bucks. I, I just don't trust people. Um, so this is nice because it's mounted in permanently. Uh, it does have an out data cable right there. Um, it looks kind of like a telephone cord, but it's not. It's an RJ11 four wire straight through. So what does that mean? Well, you have four wires in this little, let me find it there, sorry. Hang on, hang on. There we go. You have four wires in the end of that plug and the outer two crisscross. So the one on this side switches sides on the other side of the cable. So it's not a telephone wire, um, which you know I found out the expensive way because I needed to run the cable inside and I bought telephone type wire. It doesn't work. So I bought a RJ11 data cable, but I did have to snip the end, use a special crimper, mm -hmm. and change it for straight through um, to reach where I have it inside. Uh, it does give you error codes on the display. I'll show you that. That's inside. There's uh, a list of the codes on the box, but then you also get a card and the instructions. Uh, it tells you what's going on if, if you have a problem. Uh, the, this has worked for me. My plug in the garage, my 115 amp plug, the top half of it, the ground doesn't work. So when I have it plugged in the top half, I don't get electricity because it senses no ground and it shuts down. Um, so I know, I know that it works pretty good. And this does work with my built-in generator. Uh, on mine, I don't have an automatic transfer box. I just have an outlet. So when I unplug from the uh, pedestal of the campground I plug it in right there and then if I start my generator it'll power everything and this protects with the generator also. Let's go inside and uh, take a quick look at the uh, display inside. Okay this is the display on the inside. Um, it's just like the one on the uh, 30 amp version. It cycles through everything but since this is a 50 amp camper, that's a 50 amp surge protector. It's actually two separate circuits. And so it'll cycle through and it tells you, um, we'll go through it here real quick. There's line one, 122 volts, zero amps is being drawn. Line two, 122 volts, zero amps. It's running at 60 cycles and there's no errors. If there had been an error, it would uh, then show you the previous error. Um, now if you did have a situation like what I had to do here when I was having troubles with my ground and so it wouldn't power the camper and I needed the camper powered I knew not having a ground wasn't dangerous for the camper it, 
kind of dangerous for me if something went wrong, but you do have a bypass. So you can reach down here, you flip it right there, it kind of bypasses the whole unit and you get electricity. So if you had a situation where for some reason, you know, the, the box is blocking the electricity from coming in, but you knew the electricity was okay, just not great, you know, you, you can bypass the unit. Or if there was a defect in the unit, you can bypass it. And then you just switch back to normal use. So you can mount that anywhere inside the cable that comes with it. Oh, I can't remember if it's like seven feet or something like that, seven, 10 feet. It wasn't long enough for me, so I had to make my own cable. Um, but I, I've used this on another camper. Uh, there's a little review of it on the website for the 30 amp version. I like this because it's all built in and I just plug my camper into the outside power. Uh, works real great. We've taken it on a trip uh, with no problems. Thanks for watching our video and uh, check us out on catscamper.com. K-A-T-S-K-A-M-P-E-R.com.